In today's video, I'm going to be having a look at COVID in Australia. We're also going to be looking at what's going on with home loans and mortgages within Australia. From there, it's a quick look at UK oil and gas, and of course, a quick look at gold and silver. Hello, and welcome to another ACY Securities Market Update. My name is Alastair Schultz, and I'm going to be a host through today's trading journey. The first thing that we're going to have a look at today is about COVID cases in Australia. Yesterday, we recorded 484 new cases. The chart that you can see behind me right now shows the comparison between when COVID first started taking off here in Australia several months ago and the flattening of the curve and then obviously the new spike, which has exceeded what we saw last time round. Today, we have already had more than 390 cases confirmed and we're yet to be halfway through the day. So we are expecting that number to be well above 400 again. Now, there is some concern because we are starting to see some cases with untraceable origins appear in other states, such as New South Wales. And there has been some talk of a stage four lockdown for Victoria, which has not been seen to date. The, the highest that we've gotten to across the nation has been stage three. Moving on from that, there's also been some reports from the RBA. They've got some worries about payback shocks coming to mortgage holders. Right now, they've noted that reduced income is really the key economic driver of arrears occurring and that the unemployment rate and the net income of individuals is really the key variables that we they are looking at and that we should be looking at at the moment what we're expecting is that borrowers that have a negative equity value are more likely to run into problems with defaulting and being unable to pay their payments now at this stage 10 percent of mortgages and 15 percent of business loans have been deferred meaning that they have called their bank and asked to have a deference of payments for an extended period of time. Now, it was meant to be a cutoff date as being in September, but that has been extended by about four months, pushing the barrier to the beginning of next year when payments have to come back. The shock factor is really coming from that interest level is not going to stop. It's going to continue to accrue. And if you have a million dollar loan, like the rest of Australia's housing property prices average is, then that means you are going to have a fair amount of interest that is going to hit you with a surprise bill. And likely the banks are going to want their income coming in quite quickly. So there is concern about the potential for having an increase of people having to foreclose on their property or properties being sold quite quickly to recuperate some loss. Now, what we're seeing as well when it comes to the unemployment rate, it is currently at 7.4%. But this doesn't account for people who have left the workforce entirely or not bothered looking for a new job. At this point, there's about three and a half million people on the job seeker and job keeper payments. But the reality is that more than six million people lost their jobs earlier in the year. So it's really looking like the real unemployment rate is 11.3%. Now, moving on from that, we're going to have a quick look at UK oil and gas. Oil platforms in the UK are understaffed. They have similar problems to what we see when it comes to cruise liners. They are in tight, confined spaces. They have got shared community areas, such as sleeping arrangements, kitchens, and fooderies. And so because of all of these factors, it makes the transmission of COVID-19 very high. In fact, one of the highest company death rates has come from an oil company with more than 200 of their staff killed from coronavirus, purely because they've been working in offshore oil rigging. Now, at this point in time, the UK is reliant on their sea platform based energy, meaning that they have to have it coming in. It helps stabilize the oil prices, but also their natural gas supply and a variety of other measures that they drill for offshore. Now, if they're not giving the testing, which is what it looks like at this point in time, the free testing is not being conducted is for frontline community transmission sort of workers that might be in the face of coronavirus. And of course, for those that are suspected to be carriers of, or at least showing symptoms. It is not though for asymptomatic workers who might be on these oil rigs. And of course, getting one person on an oil rig that has to be quarantined means that you are likely to see a spread quite quickly because of the confined living arrangements. So there is a little bit of worry about what might happen to UK Brent prices if this isn't resolved quite quickly. Now, moving on from oil, we're having a quick look at gold. Gold and silver have both shot up in value. Traditionally, this is the first time, or historically, this is the first time we've seen silver really rise beyond its seven-year high. It's now at $22 an ounce, and gold is at $865 per ounce. Now, there's a couple of reasons that I see as to why this is happening. And I feel that it is a bit of risk on assets, and people are trying to push away and move into the safe haven side of investing. 
Because of, we have a resurgence of virus cases occurring. We've seen slow growth in a number of countries, but particularly the US. We've also got failing or falling bond yields occurring across the globe, purely from the idea of what's going on within their economy. And they are having some struggles to really get those yield values back up again. Now, all of that together, we've also got a bit of a problem when it comes to the supply side for silver and gold. So those supply concerns are becoming an issue, especially when we've got the issues that we see, such as in the oil rigs, the same thing extends to the cases of mines that might be mining for gold or silver. They have issues with being able to accurately test their staff and keep them in the right stages of social distancing without having a huge amount of community related infection within the mines themselves. So moving on from this sort of point, it is something to consider in the long term. If we do see gold and silver rising further, it's likely because we're looking at it for a safe haven predicament. Now, moving on for the news ahead of today, we have the, Euro the German 30 uh, bonds, treasury bonds coming out. We also have Canadian CPI. We have US crude inventories coming out later tonight. So if you are trading WTI, Keep an eye on that one. We also have US home sales later in the evening. So it'll be interesting to see what their value as a property market is going and how the coronavirus and obviously all the lockdowns are going is affecting the sales of pro homes. Now also something to keep in mind tomorrow is a Japan bank holiday and as is Friday. I will keep you reminded with that in the next videos that we do tomorrow and on Friday. But either way, if you are looking at trading yen or anything from the Tokyo Stock Exchange, then please keep an eye on those factors. You might see a little bit less liquidity in the market around those times. Anyways, if there's anything from today's video you'd like to get in contact with me about, please feel free to shoot me an email at talk 2 at acy.com. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video so you can get more great content from me and ACY Securities in the future. Have a great trading day ahead.